Hello there, Lawrence Grayson back again for shortformvideo.com with part two of this two-part After Effects tutorial that shows you how to create a nice laser etched steel effect. Now in this section I'll be showing you some of the things I've used to finish off the animation. That includes a uh, heat haze, some rising smoke, um, a nice point of light and some sparks. So um, let's get started with the, uh, the light point. So go to your project panel and create a new composition. Now we actually want this one to be fairly small, so I'm going to set 100 pixels width and 100 pixels height and we'll leave it at 15 seconds long and the rest as it is. And we'll just call this laser highlight and hit OK. Then go to your ellipse tool, select a fill of white and a stroke color of yellow and a stroke width of around um, 10 to 15 pixels and holding down shift to lock the ellipse to a circle draw a point from the top left hand corner of your composition down to the bottom right now go back to your laser etch composition and bring in the laser highlight shape that we've just created move it so it's beneath our laser beam. I might just drop the layer to beneath the laser beam for now so we can see what we're doing. And just place it underneath the point. Now tap S to bring up the scale properties and just drop the scale down to about 50%. Next step is to go to the effects and presets panel and find your fast blur effect and drag that down onto the laser highlight and increase the blurriness significantly probably down around the 40% 40, um, 40 mark. Now we can take the highlight and drop it back on top of the laser beam. So I'm going to change the blending mode by right clicking on the laser highlight and selecting classic color dodge. And if I zoom in you'll see that it's given us this nice really hot blown out highlight um, that blends with the laser beam underneath. Tap P on the laser highlight to bring up the position value and then tap U on the laser beam to bring up the keyframe values of the ending point. Then holding down ALT click on the stopwatch for the position value of your laser highlight and just grab the pick whip and select the ending point of your laser beam and just click anywhere else to finish off the expression and immediately you can see we've got a highlight point that tracks the end of the laser now as well as the point of highlight I also want to create um, an outer glow so uh, to do that again very simple select your laser highlight and hit control and D to duplicate it I'm going to rename that as Laser Glow. Tap S to bring up the scale properties and just blow up the scale to 150%. Okay, our next step is to create some trailing sparks. So we right click, select New and Solid, and we'll call this Particles. Go to the Effects and Presets panel and find your CC Particle Systems 2 and drag that onto your Particles layer. Now you can see it's a little bit excessive to begin with, so there's a few things we need to do. Go to the Birth Rate and set that to 1. Go to the Longevity and set that to 0.1. Twill down the Producer settings and just create a keyframe on the position. Go down to the layer and tap U to bring up the position keyframe you just created. And again we're going to select our laser beam layer and tap U to bring up the keyframes for the ending point. And we're going to match the um, position properties of the particle generator to the end point of the laser, just like we did with the uh, laser glow and the laser highlight. So once again, hold down ALT and click on the stopwatch to create an expression, then drag the pick whip 
onto the ending point values of the laser beam. And you can see we've got this rather crazy set of sparks that follows the highlight around. I'm just going to calm things down a bit with the, uh, the particles. Might take the birth rate back down even further to 0.5 just to shorten it up. And set the birth color to white and the death color to a hot orange. And I can select the transfer mode to screen. While I'm there, I'll also drop the uh, X and Y radius values down to zero. And that gives us our trailing sparks layer. Now it's uh, not perfect, because as you can see, when it jumps from one letter to another, the uh, particle generator doesn't switch off. So in instances like this, you need to uh, create a keyframe for the birth rate at the point where it leaves. So we've got it locked to 0.5 there. Next keyframe is zero. Page down one more frame and take it back up to uh, 0.5. And that just turns off the uh, particle generator in between each letter. Okay, so we're on the home stretch now. What I'm going to create is a nice shimmering heat haze. And we're going to do that by creating a new composition. We'll call it heat haze. And just set it to the 1280 by 720, 25 frames and 15 seconds long that matches the existing laser etch composition. I'm going to create a new solid and call this displacement map. Hit OK. In the effects and presets panel, find your fractal noise and drag that onto your new solid. Take the contrast up to about 150. And maybe the complexity up to 10. Now at the beginning of the timeline, I'm going to create a sub-offset keyframe and then tap end to move the timeline indicator to the end of the sequence. And holding down shift, I'm just going to scrub the sub-offset value so we've got some nice rising smoke. And I'm going to do the same thing for evolution. So timeline indicator at the beginning, create a keyframe, tap end to take it to the end of the sequence, and we'll just add a value of 2. So we should have some nice evolving fractal noise traveling up. Now that's still just a little bit uh, too small. So twirl down the transform values and we'll take the scale up to 150. And probably take the brightness down to minus 25. With the displacement map solid selected, hit Control, Shift and C to create a new pre-comp. So call this displacement map pre-comp. Move all the attributes across and hit OK. Now go back to your project panel and find your laser etch composition and drag that so that it sits on top of your layers. In the effects and presets panel, find the displacement map effect and drag it onto your laser etch comp. and select the displacement map layer that we've just created. That's the displacement map pre-comp. Select uh, luminance for both the horizontal and vertical displacement. And we can probably leave it at 5. And one last thing, just check the wrap pixels around to get rid of any untidy edges. OK, the next thing we're going to do is uh, create some smoke. So create a new solid, we'll make it medium grey, not that it really matters, and we'll just call it smoky layer, hit OK, 
find your fractal noise again, add it to the smoky layer. I'm going to increase the contrast to, a, again, probably about 150. Take the brightness down to minus 25. Twill down the uh, transform. Bring the scale up to about 125. Now at the beginning of the timeline, I'm going to create a keyframe for the offset turbulence and hit end and just drag the Y value up to about minus 50. I'm also going to set up a couple of keyframes for the evolution. So a timeline indicator back at the beginning, tap the stopwatch for the evolution settings, hit end to move your timeline indicator to the end of the sequence and we'll just set a value of 3 for evolution. If I scrub through, you'll see we've got some animated smoke. Final step is to right click on the smoky layer, go to blending mode and select soft light. Tap T to bring up the opacity values and drop it down to about 40% and that's given us some smoke. We don't actually want the smoke to appear until we've seen some action from the laser. So what I'm going to do is drag the timeline indicator to about the one second mark. Tap T to bring up the opacity and create a keyframe at the one second mark. And then about the 10 frames mark, I'm going to create another keyframe at zero. So we get a gradual fade in of smoke that appears. Now we also want the smoke to fade away. Once the laser has done its business, so at about the uh, 5 second 10 frame mark, I'm going to create another opacity keyframe. And then about the 7 second mark, I'm going to drop that to zero as well. Now we also want the uh, heat haze to do a similar thing. So uh, using the opacity keyframes I've created for the smoky layer as a guide, I'm going to adjust the displacement values at the same points as I created keyframes for the smoke um, transparency, if that makes any sense. So, create keyframes of zero, then tap the next keyframe, reset them to five and five, scroll forward, create two new keyframes to hold it at 5 and 5 and go to the last keyframe point and scrub them down to 0 and 0 again. So as the smoke clears the heat haze disappears with it. Okay final stage I'm going to create a new solid we'll call it a vignette because that's exactly what I'm going to do with it. Make it black Hit OK. Use the ellipse tool to create a new mask. Tap M twice to bring up the full mask properties. Change it from add to subtract. Set the feathering to about 250. Might just play around with the mask shape. And uh, just think I might add a new adjustment layer and bring in the curves effect. Just add that to my adjustment layer. Maybe play around with the, uh, the level slightly just to make it a little bit dirtier and darker. Okay, that's looking much better. So I think uh, we're ready for another round preview. And there you have it, the, uh, the finished article. As always, I'll be putting the project file up on my website for you to download. That's it for now. Um, as always, I hope you found this useful, and uh, I'll uh, see you next time. Thanks for watching.